Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and in this video I'm going to explain two ways to create keyboard shortcuts to run your macros. So the first way is using the macro options window and the second is using VBA code for the application on key method. So in this video I'm going to explain how to set these up. I will also share the pros and cons for each and my preferred method. And let's just quickly jump over to the VB editor. So developer tab, visual basic button, keyboard shortcut, alt F11. And here is the macro here that we're going to set up a keyboard shortcut for. This is called cell color green, and it just changes the fill color of the selected range to green. So we'll first look at the macro options window. So we're going to jump back over to Excel. And again, from the developer tab, we're going to click the macros button, keyboard shortcut, alt F8. And that will bring up the macro window. And here we can filter down our macros for just macros in this workbook. We'll go ahead and click or select the macro we want to set up that shortcut for. And then we're going to click the options button. That'll bring up the macro options window. And right here we have a shortcut key section where we can set up our keyboard shortcut. And in this text box right here, this is where we can specify the shortcut key. We can type a letter or number in here or a key. And so if we were to type, we'll just select here and type the letter C, that would mean our keyboard shortcut to run this macro is control C. Now that would override the existing functionality of control C, which is to copy. And we don't necessarily want that. So most of our shortcut keys here are going to be a control shift shortcut. So what I mean by that is I'll go ahead and delete that C and start with a blank box. I'm going to hold down the shift key and then press the letter C. And that will create the keyboard shortcut control shift C to run our macro. So we'll go ahead and press OK here and then we'll just cancel out of this window. And now if we press control shift C, we can see that our macro runs and our cell is filled with a green color. And it's important to note that this shortcut will work on any open Excel file. So if I open a new file, I'll just hit Control N to open a new file here, select a cell, press Control Shift C. And again, that shortcut will run our macro on any open file. So I'll go ahead and go back to our uh, existing file here. And we can also delete those shortcut keys from the same window. So again, we'll go Macros Window, Alt F8. And then uh, here we'll select our macro, go back to the options window. And if we wanted to delete the shortcut key, we can just select in this box here and hit backspace or delete to delete that. We can now see it's blank. We'll hit OK, uh, cancel out of this. And now if we select a cell and press Control Shift C, we can see that our macro does not run. So I also want to quickly talk about some pros and cons of the macro options window. We'll jump back to that here. Uh, of course, one of the pros is that it's very easy to set up. We just specify our shortcut key right here. And then some of the cons are that we are limited on the keys that we can use. All of our shortcuts will start with the control key here, and we can really only use a combination of control and shift plus a letter or number key to set up that shortcut key. Another disadvantage is that it's difficult to find the shortcut keys that you've set up for your macros. It's really kind of hidden in this window here. And if you're setting up shortcut keys for macros in your personal macro workbook, like if I go into my personal macro workbook here, I have a lot of different macros in my personal macro workbook. And to see which ones I've set up shortcut keys for, I'd have to go into each of these specific macros, click the options button, and then see if there's a shortcut key set up. Now there are macros that can help with this by looping through all of your macros or all of your code modules and listing those shortcut keys. Uh, but that again requires extra work and setup work to do all of that. And then the last disadvantage is that you can't control the order that uh, these run in, that the shortcut keys are set up in. So if you go set up a shortcut key here, and then you have another file that uses the same shortcut, maybe control shift C, you can't necessarily control the order of that. It, the order is actually based on alphabetical order of the macro name itself. So if you're sending out a file to other users and you want control shift C to do something in that file, they might already have a macro set up for control shift C and if the alphabetical order of that macro name is before your macro name your shortcut key will not work in that workbook. So I'll go ahead and cancel out of that and we'll look at the application on key method. So for this we're actually going to use code. We're going to write some VBA code to create the shortcut key. So we're going to add a new macro here into our code module. We'll call this uh, create shortcut just like that. 
and then we're going to use the application, so type application.onKey. So we're going to use the onKey method here. I'll tab into that. And when we hit a spacebar, we'll see we'll have two parameters for the onKey method. The key, which will be our shortcut key uh, referenced as a string, and then the procedure or the macro that it's going to call. And to get help with this, you can press the F1 key here, and that'll bring up this uh, MSDN help page for the on key method. And we can see some examples down here. Of course, we have descriptions of the parameters and then all of the different keys that we can uh, reference by their code names. And then down here towards the bottom, we have some examples of how to use the on key method. So I'm just going to uh, copy this one right here, this line of code, and we'll use it in our macro. And uh, these keys right here are explained right up here. So the shift key is represented by the plus sign, control key by the caret, and then the alt by the percent sign. So we can use a lot of different key combinations here, along with some special character type keys or some of the other keys on the keyboard. So we'll jump back over to the VB editor. And here again, for our parameters, I'm just going to go ahead and paste what I just copied. So this will be a control shift right arrow. Now we wanna change this to control shift C. So I'll type a C there in the curly brackets instead. And we also wanna change this to reference our our macro name. So instead of calling this macro, we're going to call this macro that's in our workbook, cell color green. So I'll just double click that, hit control C to copy, and go up here and paste that right there. So now when we run this macro, I'll go ahead and run it, and that will set up the shortcut key, control shift C, to call that macro. So this just needs to be run every time we open the file. It only needs to be run once. And then again, if we jump over to Excel now, we'll just select any cell here, hit control shift C, and that will run our macro. And this macro or this shortcut uh, key combination will also work on any open workbook we have on the computer. And then we can also use another line of code to delete the shortcut. So I'll jump back over to the VB editor. I'm just going to uh, copy this macro that we have here. We'll just copy it all and we'll paste it down here and modify it. So instead of creating the shortcut, this macro, we're going to delete the shortcut. And all we need to do is delete the second parameter here that references the macro name. So I'll just delete that as well as the comma. And then when we run this line of code, this will just reset that shortcut key to nothing so it will not be assigned to any macros. It's important to note that if this shortcut key did do something in Excel, natively in Excel, like if it was just Control C and not Control Shift C, when we ran this line of code, that would again remove that reference to the macro and Control C would just work like it normally does in Excel to do a copy. So I'll go ahead and run this macro, F5 on the keyboard, or hit the Run button. Now if we jump back over to Excel, select a cell, do Control-Shift-C, we can see that nothing happens here. Now we do have to run these macros every time we open and close the workbook. However, we can automate this process with events. So I'm going to double click the This Workbook object right here, and that'll open the code module. And then right here in this dropdown, we're going to choose Workbook, and that will add the Workbook Open Event. And this macro runs every time we open the workbook and enable macros. So from this macro, we can just call our Create Shortcut Macro. So I'm gonna choose Module 1 dot, and then we'll choose the Create Shortcut Macro. And again, that will run that macro in Module 1 every time we open the workbook and enable macros. And of course, that macro will create our shortcut key. And then we will also want to delete our shortcut key before closing this workbook. Otherwise, if we leave it enabled and we press Control Shift C, that would reopen this workbook and call the macro again. And we don't want that, so we'll want to delete this shortcut. We can automate that as well. If we go back to the This Workbook object, and then from this drop down over here, we're going to choose Before Close. There it is there. That will add the Workbook Before Close event. And here, we're just going to call our Delete Shortcut macro so module one dot delete shortcut and again before the workbook is closed that will automatically run this macro to delete our shortcuts and you can recreate this same setup in your personal macro workbook uh, bec because of course your personal macro workbook opens every time you open Excel so within the personal macro workbook Within the Microsoft Excel objects folder, we can just double click this workbook. And you can see I already have this set up in my personal macro workbook. The workbook open event here will call my macro to create shortcuts. And then before close, we'll delete my shortcuts. 
So now let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of the on key method. The first is that it's easy to find your shortcuts. If we just hit control F here on the keyboard to open the find window, in the find what box we can type on key and then hit, uh, search either the current module or the current project we hit find next, that will take us to any lines of code that contain the on key method. So here's where, again, where we can see all of our shortcuts that are set up without having to hunt through the macro options window for each macro. And again, these shortcuts will work on any open workbook that you have on the computer. So you can just set this up once in your personal macro workbook. And anytime you open any other file, you can use those shortcut keys on that file. Another advantage is we can use other characters uh, within the macro options window we're limited. In this case here, I'm using control alt, the percent symbol represents the alt key, and I'm using control alt T to open my tab hound window or run this macro here. So we can use a lot of different characters. Uh, same with this character here in the curly brackets. It does not have to be a letter or a number. We can use some of those other special keys like we saw in the help page here, the home key, left and right arrows, and all these different keys can be used in our keyboard shortcut. And then finally, we can also control the order of our shortcut keys. So what I mean by that is I'll jump back to module one here. The on key method will supersede the uh, setup that's done in the macro options window. So even if we were to set up control shift C in the macro options window for a different macro, uh, once we run this line of code here, that's going to supersede that shortcut. And when we press control shift C, that will call this macro here. And then finally, it's very easy to toggle our shortcuts on or off by just running macros. Again, we could have multiple lines of code down here for this macro to add or delete multiple shortcut keys and then quickly run those macros to toggle the shortcuts on or off. And then in terms of disadvantages, uh, one thing is the on key method does require a little bit of maintenance. And what I mean by that is if we are to change our macro name, let's say we call this dark green instead, we will also have to change the uh, code in the on key method, this reference here, we will need to manually update this. It's not automatically going to change. So we'll just copy that uh, macro name and then paste it there. So a little bit of maintenance required, but that's only if you're changing your macro names. And then another disadvantage is that we do have to run macros to create the shortcuts. We saw how we can use events to automate this process with the workbook open and before close events, but we do have to run these macros. However, it does give us a lot of control on when the shortcut keys are set up. So with all that said, my preferred method is the on key method because of its flexibility and we have a lot more control and we're also able to see all of our shortcut keys in one place. Now there is no perfect solution here, so you can use whichever you'd like. However, if you're using your personal macro workbook and setting up a lot of shortcut keys, then I do recommend using the on key method because it does give you that control and organization. So I hope that helps. Of course, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.